So yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm uh, Sebastian Blumle from the University of Applied Science, uh, Western Switzerland. I'm here together with my colleague uh, Holger, uh, University of Heidelberg. And um, yeah, I'm going to say a couple of uh, introduce, introducing statement for this session and before giving the, the floor to uh, our invited speakers and contributed speakers. Um, maybe, so I just want to say what was the motivation of the session. So Holger and I, we know each other from a couple of years. We both more coming from computer architecture. I myself uh, done a lot of work in optical networking, interconnects, computer architecture. And um, we thought that it would well, we, we, we both see that there is a lot of traction, of course, in machine learning, deep learning. Olga has been a little bit more ahead of me in that, but I need to catch up. Uh, and we said, uh, yeah, maybe we can organize a session that would talk about machine learning, but more in, in a way that is interesting for ourselves that worked in networking, meaning with distribution. So it was a bit of a joke and a, to say, maybe you can propose a session to High Peak, and uh, we did, and it got accepted, and this is why we are here. Uh, so let's be honest about it. And um, but yeah, so so in a couple of words, so the the motivation for this session is that we have seen a tremendous evolution of AI in the last ten years. It was eight years ago I was attending ISCA, and there was this lecture from Yann Lequin. And that day I discovered that actually the computer are better than humans to spot a spaghetti on, on a picture. And for me it was a revolution. And I really realized that day that AI was coming. And now it's, AI is all over places. Uh, I think it's rather well understood. We have even in our university now we have dedicated programs for AI, for data sciences. And uh, I should perhaps cut the Wi-Fi after, after that. So, uh, but it still looked that the machine learning was made in a very monolithic, at, at least I see my colleagues doing that for applied sciences, so they're working with companies, and so very often the model is monolithic, the data come to the model, uh, so at least this is my perception. So training data is very much centralized, it goes to one location, well of course the location can be I mean a virtualization, perhaps a bit dispersed, but at least you have the perception that you have the data on your one single administration. Um, and the training process owns the full data, owns in the like operating systems there. Uh, and same for processing, very often the, the processing is centralized, it's one CPU, GPU, if not, it's at least one host, if not, it's at least one cluster that you administer yourself. Of course, all what I say here is that, is it really the case? So I'm open to any comments, especially in the uh, last part of the session. Um, and here, is there a situation where data is not and cannot be centralized? So that was a bit the, the question about this session, is that, is that cases where we, we cannot have this centralization of data for, for training? Is that also cases where processing is not and cannot be centralized? So that was the, the motivation for, for this session. Um, so reasons, we, we, you, you probably looked on the program and there are a couple of reasons for doing this distribution uh, of, of machine learning. Uh, the one central is obviously privacy, that comes very quickly in mind. So I have my data, I'm okay for machine learning to learn things about it, but I don't want this data to be shared. Uh, so data cannot be exchanged, but insights about the data can. Example, and we had that was not really related to machine learning, but we had a project in my institution a couple of years ago where they had a um, database of DNA, the NDA sequences, and it was not allowed to share the DNA, but it was allowed to share the information whether a sequence would have a gene or not. That was allowed to, to share. There is also, also another reason, and this is something probably very much for us coming from the high performance and interconnect point of view, is that moving data around is expensive, processing data is cheap, so maybe through the distribution you can uh, limit the amount of data that travels around. So the question is, can we only move what we learn about the data and not the data itself? And so we save some, some energy and some efforts. And the obvious example here is sensors in the wild. Instead of having the sensors pushing everything they sense, maybe they can learn locally and then 
just share their insight. And then we have reasons for not centralizing the processing. So, well, complexity is one. So it's just that my GPU is not enough. My CPU, pick one, huh? my GPU, CPU, host, cluster is too small to handle the training. So I'm, I cannot centralize it. And this is the example that we heard about the GTP of GPT, so I'm not an expert of this. I just heard that there is a trillion parameter. For me, a trillion is a tera. And if a parameter is a byte, then I have a terabyte of data just with my parameters. Try to put one terabyte of data in memory in a chip, that doesn't work. So you obviously, just for this, you, have, you see that we have to share the data across multiple chips. And then we also have diversity. So maybe my resources are diverse and dispersed. So IoT, I have some in the edge, in the cloud, in the fog. Uh, I have to disperse my, also my machine learning across these resources. Because some of them have limited capacities, be it in terms of RAM, in terms of processing, in terms of connection to the network maybe, or also energy and power. Is there other reasons? There also, I, I'm very open, we are very open for feedbacks about that. But then there are challenges, and here the data movement is coming back. So the challenge, and here I will dive a little bit because that was my bread and butter. And there, so there is one single easy figure of merit to, to, to present. Uh, a couple of years ago, the DOE in the US said, now the supercomputers, they will have to realize an, a teraflop, no, an exaflop in 20 megawatts. In other terms, that means we need to get 50 giga flops of floating point operation per watt, which means a budget of 20 picojoules per floating point operation. Why am I telling you this? A flop involves nearly 200 bytes, a bits. You have two operands, you get a third as an output, 64 bits. So it gives you a budget of the energy per bit of 0.1 picojoule. And if you go, if you look a little bit, the numbers, like reaching uh, a very optimized memory as you get in the NVIDIA cards, for instance, this is already 10 picojoule per bit. If you need to send on a non-optimized, not too much optimized RAM, is already on the order of 100 picojoule per bit. If you want to send over an IPv6 router, it's the order of one nanojoule per bit. So it's very expensive and the budget is very small. So this is to show that processing is cheap in terms of energy, moving data around is expensive. And uh, so those, those are, we just found this paper yesterday and you see this is Wi-Fi, this is why I asked this, the question this morning. Uh, Wi-Fi is about a couple of nanojoules per bit as well. So is there really value in distributing the processing? because of this. Maybe the energy that we need to spend is too high. And then it comes also orchestration. Fine, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my machine learning in, in 50 different places, in the fog, in the edge, but then my life is absolutely complicated and, and terrible because I have to orchestra, I have to control, I have to do DevOps, I have to do LMM LOPS, I have to do Docker, I have, and so on. So can we debug, monitor this thing? Are there other challenges? This is also a question we are asking this, this afternoon. So the, the goals of the session is to hear about the benefits of collaborative learning in a wide sense. So collaborative learning means being, doing machine learning in multiple locations under multiple administrations, not in the single GPU, not in a single place. And can we address the challenges? Um, the goal of the session was also to try to envision um, collaborative machine learning from different angles, and we'll have a nice set of speakers that will each present uh, a different angle. But the very goal of this session is also to see if there is a common ground, if that all these angles can benefit for some common work, uh, potentially from the orchestration side or from the uh, calculating the energy side, that could benefit to all the, the people that are working in collaboration. Uh, and of course, the goal of the session is to get uh, known to each other. What I would just say is that it's, uh, it looks like it's um, an area that is getting traction. Uh, I'm taking the opportunity to uh, forward this uh, 
uh, uh, this uh, opportunity. So a colleague of mine is looking for research on further learning in Chalmers. So we see that there are, I see uh, post openings on, on this area. So here we go. So this is uh, the end of the, the little introduction. So I'm already late. No, it's okay.